What's up crazies? So today I wanna to talk about what to do on a job site if you don't have a plan and you don't know where to start. So this is a house that I did uh, in a previous video. Click the little thing in the, in the corner if you wanna actually see that video. But this is a ranch house um, that I had to demo. Uh, they reframed a whole bunch of stuff in here. We basically gutted the entire house. So what I figured I would do is kind of show you a little bit. Like here's the floor plan of this place. Um, we're standing right here. This is the kitchen. They have kind of a kitchen outlined. Uh, they've got like rooms, uh, you know, where they're supposed to be, but there's actually no electrical plan. And this isn't even really a plan. This is just something that the AV guy had put together uh, before all of this. So what I wanted to talk about was when you don't actually have a plan and you just need to kind of figure things out, that's where you just break into the code and do the basics. So one thing, the first thing that I did is I needed to start marking out all my plugs and switches. And again, there's no plugs, there's no switches, there's no cans, there's nothing on here. I have to figure the whole thing out myself. So I know like first and foremost, I, where is my power gonna come into this place? So I know for sure that there is a service out here. There's a pole right there. You know, like there's a transformer, uh, you can, it's on the back side of that pole, power comes in, comes over here. So there was an existing service, I'm gonna keep the service there. All right, check, that's what I've figured out. So am I gonna put a panel anywhere inside? Well, the place really isn't that big. I think we could do everything externally out on that service. There's just really not that much of a demand. So there's not gonna be that many circuits for me to have to have multiple panels. Um, everything's gas too, so I'm running igniters, you know, like uh, for all the furnaces, for the washers, dryers, like everything is gas. There's really no demand. Uh, there's not, not much of a big load. So um, I nixed needing another panel anywhere. So I'm like, all right, well then the next thing to do is just to figure out where all my plugs and switches go. So I went within six feet of a doorway. Um, this is all gonna be countertop space. They haven't really figured out what they want for appliances and where things go. So I kind of marked out like general uh, countertop receptacle heights. I went to 45 inches for everything. Most countertops are gonna be down at 36 inches. So uh, they'll have probably a tile backsplash in this whole thing, but I know that I'm gonna need receptacles. I just didn't put any of them up because again, we don't have a, a full design yet. So I don't wanna waste the time and go and putting all that up when I know it's not gonna be there. I know we've got a refrigerator down here. I know that the sink's gonna be here because they already, you know, they plumbed all of that stuff in. Um, but I know like generally what needs to happen. So, um, you know, anytime you're in a room, regardless of really what the room, well, hallways are a little bit different. Hallways, you have to have a plug every, uh, every 10 foot of hallway, you need to have a receptacle. Um, but within, again, within six feet of the entrance of a doorway, you have to have a receptacle. And then at, within 12 feet thereafter, you have to have another receptacle. So you can have more than that if you want. Like that's really only about five feet apart. That's probably about seven feet, but you know, I'm, I'm within 12 feet. This is the one that spans because there's a window there and they've got a piece of machinery going here. So that actually is exactly 12 feet from that receptacle to that receptacle. So I can't exceed 12 feet. That's a thing a lot of helpers don't realize is like they think you have to have a receptacle every 12 feet. It's like, no, 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 you just can't go more than 12 feet without having a receptacle. Um, they're gonna cut in a doorway. So weird things that like when you're looking at this that you might not know, that's a header up there. So this is actually a doorway framed in. And if I wouldn't have taken the time to look at that, I might not have known. So there's actually gonna be a cutout for a doorway. To me, that looks like that might actually be a window, but I know already I've talked to the builder that used to be a window because there's a header up there. Um, you know, there used to be another window. There used to be a door and this was like step down. So some of the framing just looks weird. They're trying to save the shell, you know, the bones essentially of the outside of the building and just worry about reframing inside. I kind of think they should have just gutted the whole damn thing and knocked the building down and started over because you just have really weird old framing everywhere. So it's going to be hard to get wires because we've got like, we've got headers across all of these walls. You know, so I have to do all my wiring through the walls. So just like weird stuff like that. There's not gonna be any attic space. So like I have no room anywhere to, uh, you know, run anything to an attic, but they are gonna have a furnace over here in this hallway. They built like a little closet. It's gonna be a gas furnace. 
So I just put, you know, you can see that it's going to be a gas furnace because this is a gas line. If that's not there, then you're going to assume that it's an electric. But everywhere that I see one of these stubs with this black uh, pipe, I know that's incoming gas. So I just put a switch there because I need some disconnecting means uh, for this furnace. Um, or I could have put a receptacle so that you have a cord that you can plug in and plug out. You just need some way to disconnect that equipment so that somebody can work on it. Um, I've got a couple bathrooms back here. So like this is one bathroom. I know that this is where my sink is. So I know that I need a GFCI receptacle um, near that basin. There's going to be like a built in kind of towel thing there. So I had to make sure I was outside of that. There's going to be a toilet there. Anytime you see something like that, you know that that's going to be a toilet. The toilet sits right on top of that. And then you can see, you know, that copper line. That's where all of the water goes in. So like to start kind of identifying things and figuring out what's going on, there's a lot of information here. You know, there's a lot of things that you can figure out just by looking around and seeing what's going on. I know for a fact that that's gonna be a shower. You know, all the water drains down into the shower and then I know right here, I'm gonna have some kind of knob. There's water coming into it. There's gonna be a knob for me to control and then going up, that's going to be a, uh, um, the sprayer, the sprayer, the sprayer nozzle thingy, you know, that shoots the water on you in the shower. So there's a lot of information, right? There's a lot of things you can look at. I know that this is a window, even though the fucking AV guy didn't realize, <laughs> didn't realize that that's a window. He ran all of his shit right through the window space. So they're going to have to do that. And for some reason he put his, he put his ring over here for the TV, but he, <laughs> <laughs> he ran his fucking wires over there. Just didn't pay attention. And this is the exact same room. Like it's opposite, you know, it's the exact same layout and there's a fucking window there. But he did the same thing. He put his ring over there and then he ran, <laughs> ran his wires over here. And it was just like a subcontracted crew of people that came in. It wasn't like the main people that are doing the AV, they're killer, dude. I love them. Um, and they've been kind of in charge, but I think at this point there's so much to do that they've started bringing like subcontracted people in and you can tell. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, in here, I know that they're gonna do, I marked out four gangs. Um, this whole property is all Lutron, so we've been doing homework system throughout the entire property. This house specifically is not getting homeworks. So all that means is like most of the houses are gonna have keypads everywhere. So you just walk up and there's like a single gang device uh, right here and there's like six buttons on it and you hit one button and it turns a load on. So it deletes the need to have a four gang like bank of switches here. But in this case, I'm actually doing a four gang. Um, I always write, you know, four S's. If it's a three way, I'll put like a little three next to it. This line is the top of the device. And then the actual box goes down here. That's how I draw my stuff. And then I always put right next to it what the actual loads are that are gonna be controlled. I know I've got cans. I know I'm gonna have a vanity sconce or, you know, probably two sconces on the wall. I'm gonna have a vent fan and I'm gonna have a, a heat. So I'm gonna have to run a separate circuit just for that heater inside of that fan because a lot of these will come with like a light and a night light and a fan and a heat and that heat actually draws a lot of power. So um, I usually run a separate circuit just for all of the heat. So every one of these bathrooms is gonna be like that. There's four bathrooms in here where there's gonna be four heaters. Um, I got recessed cans going everywhere. I know, you know, like, this is a hallway. I just put one can in the center of the hallway and this is another kind of like little niche right here. Um, you can see on the floor that it's, it's like a rectangle. So I know that that's a hallway. So I put another recessed can up there and I'm giving them, you know, a switch to be able to control it. But I know if I'm going to like walk out of this hallway into the kitchen, I know that somebody's going to want to be able to turn lights on after they wake up. So they need something nearby to be able to turn on lights in this area. And then we've got the front door, so we're probably gonna need a switch to control all these lights from that side. We're gonna need a switch to control things from that side as well for people that are coming out. You know, if this room's dark, um, they need to be able to control it over there. People coming out of there, out of like a conference room, if this is dark in here, they might need a way to control it, but I'm not gonna put another switch right there when there's already one right here. So, you know, if they're gonna come out of this room, and they're going to go over, you know, they can open the door and go over and there's a switch literally right here. So I'll probably do a four way in this setup, 
you guys have seen me do videos on three-way and four-way switches. A three-way would be if I have one switch here and one switch there and they're controlling the same lights, that's a three-way. But a four-way is when I have one, two, three. I could have seven locations where I have switches that are all controlling the same uh, cans that are gonna go up in that ceiling. Um, but I'm just gonna give them a lot of different options. I knew out here, you know, we're probably, these are old cans, these are not ours. I just haven't ripped them out yet. But I know there's gonna be some lighting up there. They're probably gonna have some sconces out here on the walls. They might have like a um, low voltage stub over there. They might have some soffit lights, something like that. So I just knew that right here, I'm probably gonna have a four gang. So I just marked exterior sconces, exterior cans. I want the kitchen cans in here to be controlled right when they walk in this door. Uh, there's probably gonna be kitchen pendants if they decide to do an island. Um, I might have like one row of lights that's just general lighting up there. And then I might have something that's like over all of the kitchen stuff. So that's just figuring things out, right? I'm just going along and I'm looking at the space and I'm thinking like, if I lived here and I was utilizing the space for my own, you know, purposes, where would I want things? You kind of, you have to walk through a place to figure all of this stuff out. So if you're an apprentice and you're trying to figure out like, I don't know where things go. Like what, what height are TV plugs? Well, I just picked a height, <laughs> you know, and I just decided there's a big wall. There's gonna be a big TV. I don't want it way up there. I don't want it way down there. You know, like probably pretty dead center. Um, I did check with the AB guys. I'm like, is there a specific height? Are you doing specific kind of like bracket or anything? That if I put this in a weird place and they're like, nah, just do it eye level. So for me, you know, eye level, that's where I put them. Um, they're gonna have a server over here. So they, I noticed they ran all of their stuff there. So I'm putting a plug over there. Nobody told me to do that. I'm just putting a plug because I know that they're gonna have stuff to um, plug in and it's gonna be one of those like low racks that they can pull out and move around. But again, I've got all my plug spacings within six feet of the door, I've got a plug there. Within six feet of the door, I've got a plug there. And then within 12 feet all the way around the room. So it's, it's really pretty easy to start laying out houses once you get the gist of it. What I like to do is start doing all the ceiling stuff first. Like I get everything down low, boxed up. I just didn't have any help today. Otherwise I would have, I would have had all the helpers doing this, like putting all the recessed cans up, marking everything out and just staying up on the ceiling on ladders so that all day long people are just on ladders putting cans up so we can get the hell off ladders. And then we're all down here where we can be fast and efficient. But it, again, it was just me. So once I got all this stuff boxed out, I just started grabbing cans and started doing a layout in here. There's another like sink countertop area with a, a window so like i might have to put another can up there that goes above the sink usually with sinks i try to put a light over the sink so while you're washing dishes and stuff if you have lights behind you you're not casting a shadow on like whatever you're working on in front of yourself so there's just gonna there's probably gonna be lots of little changes lots of little things that happen but the builder is just is like relying on me to know where things need to go because we don't have a plan and we keep asking for plans from the people that own the property and they're like, Oh, we'll just, you know, like we'll get one. We'll get one. Eventually we'll, we'll get you a plan. And then it's like, all right, months are going by and there's still no plan. So fuck it. I'm just going to go, I'm going to wire this how I think it should be. And then if there's any changes, you know, we might have to change one or two things here or there. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's this one building. So I'll do another video uh, where I walk through all the other buildings and kind of show you guys, the steps of all of it, like that whole building, you can't tell from the outside, but that's a concrete bunker. It's like floor, walls, ceilings, 100% concrete everywhere. And the other house that's down on the other side, not this gym, but the house that's on the, the other side over there is another huge concrete bunker. Um, I have in that house, I have like big ass fans that we're gonna hang. And yes, big ass fan is actually a brand of fan if no, none of you have ever seen it. But like if you ever go to like a, a big gym or something like that, they've got like 10 foot, 14 foot, you know, wide, huge fans. And it's called the, the brand is big ass fan. So that place over there where they've got all of those uh, vehicles, that little pavilion, that's actually like a concert venue. So they have live music that'll come in and play. Um, they're gonna have some big ass fans put over there. There's like way on that end of the property, there's a big barn. That's where all the ranch hands kind of stay. That's where all their equipment is. We have more big ass fans to do over there. We got all kinds of crazy stuff, dude. Uh, we're gonna be out here. I come out here every week, like several days a week, bring big crews out here, but we're probably gonna be out here for the rest of this year, every single week. And the cool thing is it's all time and material. So we're just billing as we go. We don't have to stay within any kind of a quote and they keep changing things like crazy. 
And a lot of people would get irritated at that. It's like, dude, I just did all this work and now you're having me add all these other things. Now we're tearing down another room and building up more rooms. Now we gotta do this, now we gotta do that. But dude, it's money. It's job security, it's work. It's like, it all pays the same. Who gives a shit if you're tearing something out that's old, you know, tearing out these old wires, or if you're tearing out wires you've already installed, like either way they're paying for it. I get it, like people want to see the progress. They wanna like feel like they've really got somewhere with a job, but like, dude, you still gotta go and put eight hours a day worth of work in, like who gives a shit what it's doing? Um, well, unless it's like digging trenches, cause that sucks. Lately, I've been doing a lot of that. I've been driving a mini X like crazy, doing undergrounds. Yesterday, I had a job where we had such an extreme voltage drop. We had a 500 foot run, and all they're doing is lifting boats at a boat dock. So it's a 15 amp load. Um, but I ran four, a number four aluminum all the way down, thinking, you know, that's 70 amp wire. Like that should be okay. Still wouldn't lift the boats. So then I ended up putting two out copper, um, just crazy big wire, and it was 500 feet. So. It was <laughs> It was probably a thousand pounds worth of wire. And we had to pull it with a big old fucking Dodge Dooley, uh, like Dur uh, Duramax diesel. Um, but yeah, I just been doing a lot of like crazy work like that. So that's kind of the shit that I hate because it's Texas. It's, there's no clouds anywhere. Like, look at this. It's just relentless sun and it's 110 degrees out. You don't want to be sitting out here for eight hours digging and then our earth is not soft our earth is like it's like all of texas is one massive slab of stone with grass that grew on top of it so you can't dig anything so we're sitting out there with rock bars like slamming earth trying to get through stuff oh dude we drink gallons of water a day it's it's a fucking nightmare digging in texas um but we got to do it so anyways that's my rant um i'll let you know or i'll, I'll, I'll like record more of what i'm doing so i can show you how I wire things and you know, like how I wire two gangs and how I wire four gangs and stuff like that, just to see if there's any value you guys can get out of it. But love you crazies. Uh, and make sure to watch this video. This is the one where I actually go through the demo of this whole space and, and kind of show you what's going on. If you uh, want to watch some other like rough in kind of stuff that I've done, uh, watch this video that shows you like how I prepare my wires in a box for the devices to go in later. Love you. Bye.